um, where the t-shirt, outer t-shirt thing meets my neck. I usually just put it there because the plate carrier on a bigger chested female does not sit very well. So I, I got tired of it rubbing. So I'm always ready to pull it if need be. Okay. okay. Um, but in those cases, the um, kids went to their family member. Um, I stayed with them, let them run amok in my charger. <laughs> they love the lights and sirens. They usually do. <laughs> and, you know, they actually do that. And I wasn't a PIO. A uh, PIO is a public information officer or a public relations officer is another uh, form of what you call it. So basically, they're the ones that engage with the uh, population um, or like citizens. They're usually the ones that are more flashy about the job. Most officers that are original or like just on the force, just a number basically, was, um, or a body. What was the outcome of the situation? So unfortunately, they were transported to the county. Um, from what I remember, they basically just bonded out and they had to do drug counseling and stuff like that. Prediction. Okay. Um, basically, I didn't charge them for drug dealing because they really had a problem. They weren't, there was no plastic baggies. There was no scales. They were just, something was going on and I don't know what. Um, they didn't tell me. It's not but my they, business to tell. But but they was arrested though, right? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So. Yep, man, they were detained. and Man. So, what happened? Uh, you, 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 you switched from being the trooper to going into corrections, why why did you make the change? Uh, I I went into my uh, um, district commander, uh, Fitfield, and I slapped my back on the desk. I was like, your officers treat me like shit. They won't let me control my own scene. Here's my bad. Here's my shit. I'm gone. Bye. And that's basically what happened. I, I, was, I was like, I took my oath. You're not letting me do what I need to do. Here. I, I told them off and I walked out. So then I switched to corrections, um, stayed with Indiana State uh, Prison for six months. I was a correctional officer. I was there from January to, I think it was June or July. So um, I got most of my certifications. So was it was it women or men or what? All male. It was all male inmate, uh, Max maximum security so we house lifers uh death row wow. um anything above 10 years and uh, past that usually Whew. indiana is still one of the few states that does death row um it is by lethal injection i don't know if they're still trying to bring back the um electric chair or not or the firing seven gun firing squad but i do know that there's more in the works for it um as a correctional officer, you have duties to perform even on a lockdown situation. Now, a lockdown situation is where these inmates cannot move. So a prison basically runs itself. You have restricted housing units, which don't come out at all. They maybe get an hour, if that. And they're always to be remain tough when moving. So, um, so, now, what, so what was, so for the six months that you was, that you was a correction officer. Mm -hmm. What was your experience with the inmates? If any. Oh, so female guards are usually, I wouldn't say more respected, but I would say less harassed by each other. They have this thing called where they're fishing. So they're testing what they can do and what they can't, even though they, when they know the rules, they're trying to see if you can break protocols. Um, so, for instance, let me use one of the incidents I came across. There was a dude who was mad because I didn't use a certain method to give him his lunch because it was a lockdown situation. Mm -hmm. And he freaked the hell out. He actually freaked the hell out. He threw the sack at me of his lunch. It was like a sandwich, like a ham sandwich, cold ham sandwich. So and he, he wanted to give he wanted you to give him his sandwich a certain way yep they're very 
some of them have psychiatric issues. Some have some routine. Some are just, I don't know. What. So, <laughs> so, uh, but, what way, but basically, he. What, what way, what way that you need to give him a sandwich? I mean, just what? So I had gloves on. So uh-huh. I'm allergic to latex and there's certain gloves that I can use. He okay. was complaining about how I was giving him the sack lunch through the little cuff port to hand it to him. And then he threw it through the bars, actually, because this state prison is older than the Civil War, actually. He threw it through the bars and it hit me, actually, in the face and chest. And um, he came up on the bars and started slamming the hell out of them. Like, he was like, oh. And yes, drugs still come into a prison, whether it's the COs, inmates, families. It's everybody that brings it in, technically. Okay. So, um, it's called trafficking. Okay, so... So the sandwich, I mean, mm-hmm. he he was literally mad at you because of the way that you you handed to him. And he, well, he yeah, just, he didn't. Mm-hmm. He, he just threw it at you. And what what did you what what did you do when when inmates get uh out of hand? So like by that, policy, do, yeah. So by policy, I could OC him. I could tell him to cough up, and I could transfer him transport them to the restricted housing unit or I can get my superiors in and then let them deal with it. Now I I was dealing with them by myself until I was forced to call somebody else to assist. Um my sergeant, uh Lito actually. I'm gonna call him Lito. He is such a good guy. We're in the probably the rowdiest cell house. This is where my lieutenant was actually stabbed. A cell house, A Adam. And basically it's a Dude's bigger than me, twice the size, 450 pounds. I'm over here, 250, half his size, half his weight, and I'm already outclassed. There ain't no way, and he's already stronger and aggravated than me. So I'm over here, like, mm. they're like, is everything okay? And I'm on the walkie and stuff, and I'm like, mm, kind of. Like, they knew I was hesitating, and I don't usually hesitate. So they came up, canine came up. E squad, the rest of my squad actually that I work for on the side, like as an extra part, came up and they're like, What's the problem with you, boy? And like my other second in command, OIC, which is officer in charge, uh, she came up. Her name is Stickler, as we call her. Her last name is Stickles. And bless her heart, she was like, He's already lying. And Lito was like, You want to make a report on him? Well, this day, it was commissary day. Commissary day is hell. So you have all these dudes that make deals in these in this system and basically, you know, try to move things around. If they don't owe these person or if they can't meet up on their deal, they're going to put a hit on this one person. So basically, this person could either be beat the hell up, raped in prison. Um, I'm trying to put this nicely and appropriately. Basically, sexually assaulted, you know, battery situation. And then we got investigated all over after that. But, um, so they check in. They do anything to an uh, officer that's trusted to get moved. Now, if you really want correct behavior, which I was a very good officer at doing reverse psychology. That's why I was E-Squad the way I was and most respected out of all of them. Um, so this dude was checking in, I figured out, when he threw that sack on me. So I was like, okay, you know what, Lito? I'm not going to write up a report on this. He's checking in, probably. It's commissary day. And his eyes, like, bug-eyed, like, deer-eyed. Like, he used to, was a deer in headlights. Like, he's like, damn, you're smart. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why I scared Lieutenant Kane. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because they gave me a nickname after that because of that. Oh, okay, okay. So six months, uh, six months. Why? Why did you? Why? Why did you pack up and leave? So, with how the policies were after Lieutenant Lasco died, they were supposed to implement stab vest because we worked at one of the worst prisons besides Miami County, and um, after the whole lynch. Lieutenant Lasco incident after he died, um, 
a lot of the upper chain got theirs first, which never come behind. They're just desk, glorified desk people. And they don't come back and check on us. You know, there's a couple that do, but a lot of them don't. So you have your shift supervisors, like, um, I don't want to mention his name, but Captain D. I'm going to call him Captain D. And he, he basically was a former vet like myself, but he actually very, very made me angry to where I was just like, you know what? You're forcing me to somebody that I can't protect myself against without a vest. And the thing is, it was a CO. I have on file a CO that tried to fight and instigate fights with other COs. He is not supposed to be working with anybody. And I and I, which is our investigations team for the state of Indiana, is supposed to investigate this. He actually had a fight outside in the parking lot with Jones, which is one of my classmates, actually, through this academy training thing. And I'm like, I'm not going to be put in that situation with him. And if Jones is getting beat up, who's 6'4", 6'3", about 300 pounds, I've got not a chance against him either. I don't want to be working with him. I'm not going to be forced to work with somebody like that. So that's... Was and I already the, have priors in my file about that. So that was the yes, reason why you all, left? Yep. And the fact that the stab vests weren't implemented and I was squad. So E-squad trip officers. Trip officers are your people that take the um, inmates to other prisons or facilities or hospitals. So we have our own medical unit on the premises. But... It's only basic care. It's like triage. It's not even like, it's really not really much. Now, unless you're dying, um, they can do like splinters, blood pressure, diabetes, you know, basic nurse stuff. Oh, okay. Almost like nursing home. Okay. Okay. But so- if you're, if you're, if you're needing like surgery or anything, they can't do anything there. They have to take you out. So those trip officers are armed and they take you. There's a whole nother protocol for that. Oh, okay. So you're you're done with uh with being the CEO. What what made you get into trucking? So I was a, trying to do truck driving well before my military career. I joined the Navy in 2015. Um, so I was in going through CR England after college since I went to automotive type performance for college right out of high school, and I decided to just try it you know that's where i met my best friend he went from cr england to swift and he's the one who got me to go into swift this past year and i regret it (laughs) significantly i regret listening to him so you start so you started off with cr where, where did you get your license from was it from cr england or from swift i got it through swift okay so um i i just so you went through the Swift account. Yeah, I tested out. Yep. But so with Fear England, I, I got hurt bad. But, I actually went to class one day and I actually fell off a trailer. Okay, so that's so that's what happened to you over at CR England? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. So then I made a full recovery and then but, went from there. But, but, but in wait, Swift, wait, 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 hold up. You you say you got <laughs> you you say you got hurt. Over at CR England, yeah, you you say yes, you I fell, did. You I got you, bad. So you say you fell out of the truck. Like what happened? Off the trailer. To, I fell off the trailer. You fell off the trailer. So, so it was kind happened? of what? Uh huh. So in training in the yard, you know, we were still using manuals before the whole mandate thing switched, and I was in the back of the trailer trying to like they were showing us how to open the trailer doors and stuff. And I actually went down, but my foot missed the DOT bumper, and I like literally like fell on my back. And I I walked it off, but then I really really flubbed up, and I started feeling it later down the road when I got back to the hotel. I'm like, I gotta tell somebody about this. This is bad. If so, I'm so gonna hurt. So, so they didn't at the time at the time of the incident that you fell off the the trailer. They didn't offer to take you to take you to the hospital to get you no. once over. Nope. 
I am above and there are a lot of things that are above me Do not come for the people I like.